Today on Six Sister Stuff, I'm sharing with you 20 of the best things to make in the Instant Pot. Now, if you guys have been around for a while, you know that I love sharing simple, easy recipes so you guys can get dinner on the table. Now, starting out, I did a lot of Instant Pot recipes. I started a few years ago. Now, I've slowly dabbled in other things such as freezer meals, sheet pan recipes, and even air fryer recipes. But we're going back to Instant Pot today because I wanna share with you the things that I make the very most. So these are my top 20 Instant Pot recipes that you can make all the time. Now the first seven recipes are what I like to call the basics. Then the next 13 recipes are simple, easy dinner ideas. So you guys are ready? Let's just jump into it. The first recipe is ground beef. I love cooking ground beef in the Instant Pot. All right, so I'm gonna start with the three pounds of ground beef. Yes, that's a lot of ground beef, but I'll show you what I do with it later. So I'm gonna put my little trivet in the bottom of my pan. Then I'm gonna add about one cup of water because you have to have the liquid in order for it to pressurize. Now it's time for the meat. Now I've put this on my counter for about an hour. It's still really, really frozen. So I'm gonna break it apart so I can put it in pieces in the Instant Pot. Now, if you need to break up your meat into a few different pieces, it will still work. You just wanna make sure that your meat is below the fill line so the lid will go on your Instant Pot. Now, I'm just gonna hurry and go wash my hands and then it's time to put the lid on. Now, you wanna make sure that it is sealed all the way and turn the little knob so it's on sealing, not venting. Okay, so I love my manual button or just a normal pressurized, pressure cook, whatever your Instant Pot says, and we're going to 25 minutes. Now when your Instant Pot's done, it will start counting up or it's releasing on its own. I let it release on its own for about 10 to 15 minutes. Turn the knob over, there's no steam to come out so I can take my lid off. Now I wish you could smell my kitchen because it smells so good right now. Now it looks like it's still like a brick of meat, but don't worry. We're gonna turn it into ground beef and it will really look ground up. Okay, so I'm gonna take my two big chunks and if you have multiple little chunks, put them all into a bowl. And the first thing I did is cut it up just a little bit. Now this is cooked together like a meat loaf really is cooked together. So you have to split up the meat. And doing this, it was the easiest to use a knife. Then, once I cut it up into big chunks, I got my chop and stir. If you don't have one of these with your ground beef, I highly suggest getting one. They're like six bucks on Amazon and it's my favorite. So I just chopped up all of my meat and that really is all there is to it. This is gonna be my new way of cooking ground beef and I am so excited. Now I just have to show you that all the grease literally dripped to the bottom of the pan, which makes it a whole lot healthier. Okay, now three pounds of meat is a lot, so I'm splitting it up into three different one pound bags. So I'm gonna freeze two of my bags that each have one pound of ground beef, and then I'm gonna put one in the refrigerator because I am making taco soup. I love having ground beef just sitting around all cooked, ready to go. Then if I need to do a quick meal of tacos, taco soup, something that is so simple that has ground beef in it, I can just grab it out of the freezer and go. The second recipe is called Instant Pot Corn. I will never go back to heating up a big pot again. Instant Pot is the way to go. Now, if you've never made corn in the Instant Pot, now is the time to do it. You don't have to watch it, you don't have to wait for it. So I took one cup of water and I threw four ears of corn on. You could add probably one more in a six quart Instant Pot. Now if you're using a three quart one, go ahead and split the corn in half. If you're using an eight quart, you can add more corn if you want. All right, we're gonna close the lid and put it on sealing. And now for my favorite part, because it really doesn't take a lot of time, I'm gonna push manual and go all the way down to five minutes. Now, once it's done, I do a quick release so I can eat my corn faster. But if you do need to wait a little bit, it is fine just to sit in the Instant Pot until dinner is ready. So I take my lid off and my corn is perfectly done. Number three, I love cooking hard boiled eggs in the Instant Pot. I feel like it is now the only way that I cook hard boiled eggs. So I just poured one cup of water right into the Instant Pot. Now I have this little thing, this trivet that came with my Instant Pot. You can also use a steamer rack or something else, but this one holds about six of them. So I'm gonna close up my lid 
then make sure the knob is on sealing, not venting. I love my manual button, so I'm pushing manual and we're going to five minutes. Now when it's done, you wanna let it sit, let the timer go up for about five minutes before you turn on venting and take the lid off. Now the trick with boiled eggs is, is that you want to put them in ice water as soon as that five minutes is up and let them sit for a few minutes until they're cool. Then peeling them is a breeze since it's been sitting in that ice water. Now if you can see, cut this open, it is the perfect boiled egg. Number four is one of my most asked questions is how to cook chicken in the Instant Pot. So we're gonna start off here by, I put four chicken breasts inside the bottom of my Instant Pot. Then I'm adding one and a half cups of water. Now because this chicken is frozen, I'm gonna cook it just a little bit longer. So I'm gonna put my lid on, close it all the way, and then turn my little knob to sealing. Now I'm gonna push the manual button because I love the manual button and go up to 25 minutes. Now if you're gonna cook thawed chicken, I cook it between 15 and 20 minutes. Now when it's done, I move my knob over to venting so it's a quick release and then I take my lid off. I let it cool for a minute before I take my chicken out and I love to shred my chicken because today I am making chicken enchiladas and I want shredded chicken. Number five is sweet potatoes. So I'm gonna do three sweet potatoes here. So I'm putting these on the rack this time and I added one cup of water. Now I'm just gonna put the lid on and as you know, sealing, not venting, so it will pressurize. Now I'm just gonna push manual and go up to 15 minutes to cook sweet potatoes. Now I did a quick release and pulled the lid right off, but for some reason my camera wasn't filming, so I apologize about that. Now these sweet potatoes are done. They're a little bit more firm that I like, so I'm actually gonna put my lid back on and cook them for another five minutes. But I like my sweet potatoes really, really soft, so if you like them, a little bit more firm but still cooked all the way through, cook them for 15. If you like them really soft, cook them for 20. You can serve these different ways. You could peel them and mash them up and have mashed sweet potatoes. Or last week I made a delicious sweet potato chicken recipe. I'll put a link in the description for you if you didn't see it. Number six is Instant Pot Rice. Now you can make your rice different ways. You can use oil, you can use salt, but I just use two simple ingredients, which are rice and water. Now there are recipes that call for oil and salt. I'll also put those in the description below for you so you can have all of your rice recipes right in the description. Okay, so onto the recipe. I have one cup of rice that I rinsed until the water ran clear. So this is my cup of rice and I'm just gonna put it right in the bottom of my Instant Pot. All right, next I'm gonna add my water. So for one cup of rice, I like to add one and one fourth cup of water or chicken broth or any type of liquid that I wanna cook my rice with. The most simple basic recipe is just water. So one cup of rice to one and a fourth cup of water. Now I like my rice a little bit softer, so that's why I do one and a fourth cup. Okay, we're gonna put my lid on and make sure your knob is on sealing, not venting. Now, if your Instant Pot has a rice cooker, you can push that, but if it doesn't, you can just do manual or high pressure. That's what manual is, it's just high pressure. So because I love my manual button, that's what I'm gonna push. All right, so with white rice, we are going down to eight minutes. Now you can go as little as four minutes, depending on how you like the texture. I like it really soft, so eight minutes it is. Then let the rice release on its own for nine to 10 minutes. Then when you're done with the nine to 10 minutes, you switch over the knob to venting and it should let out all the rest of the steam. Then you can just pull your lid off and it will be a little steamy, but your rice should be fully cooked. Now this is how I make the sticky rice. I love sticky rice for recipes because it's just a lot easier to eat. But if you add a little bit of oil, it will make it a little bit harder so it won't stick together. And I'll put that recipe in the description below for you. But for me, I love my sticky white rice. Number seven 
is Instant Pot Ham. I love cooking ham in the Instant Pot and then I'll just put it in little separate baggies and freeze it for lots of different meals. So this is a spiral ham. It's already been pre-cooked, so you really don't have to do much to it other than add a lot of flavor and heat it up. So that's what your Instant Pot is for. So we're gonna make a yummy sauce to go on top of it and then we'll cook it. So let's get started. So I have a half a cup of brown sugar that we're just gonna dump in here. Then we have a half a cup of honey. I'm kind of just gonna eyeball it um, because really you can never have too much honey. Am I right? I am right. Then we have two tablespoons of Dijon mustard. We'll just pour on top. Again, I'm just gonna kind of eyeball my two tablespoons. And then you, want, you can't forget your spices. So we have a fourth teaspoon of nutmeg and a half teaspoon of cinnamon. So I'm just gonna put those in here too. And I'm just gonna take my basting brush and just kind of mix it all together. All right, once it's nice and all mixed together, now it's time to put everything into the Instant Pot. So, I'm gonna scooch that forward. It scoots just over for you. So, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna put a trivet onto the bottom of the Instant Pot. Now, you don't want a high trivet, you want one that's pretty low. So, trivet on the bottom. If you don't have a trivet, I've done it before without a trivet, it works just fine. Next, we're gonna add a cup and a half of water. So we'll just pour that into the bottom of the pot because it has to pressurize, right? Then I'm gonna show you a little bit how I'm gonna do it to the ham, but then I'm gonna transfer it over so it's not a big brown sugar mess right here. So we're gonna take some of our sauce and I like to keep put it in between each piece and just kind of spread it around a little bit. If you need it more liquidy, you can do that too and just add a little bit more water, but I like it nice and thick because it will get more liquidy as it goes on. So just depending on how you like it. Some people just like to take this and just pour it all over so the, the edges are nice and flavored. I love my inside flavored. So transfer it over. It's gonna be kind of a tight fit. If it doesn't fit all the way for you, you can always trim some edges off and let it fit, but it fits just fine for me. So we're going to just continue Basting this little guy, basting the outside, basting the inside, just to give it some yummy flavor. I love that Dijon mustard flavor too, and it, it's, mm, I can smell it. Once everything's in, you're ready to go. So it's okay if your ham goes over a little bit on the line. You have a little bit of room on your lid, so it's okay if it goes over just a little bit. As long as your whole entire thing is not over, and as long as your lid can go on, you're fine. Okay, so we're gonna put the lid on. There we go. Now, usually I'll have you turn the knob to sealing, not venting, and, but this one is a different one, so I don't have to push, I don't have to turn any knobs, it will automatically do it for me. We're gonna push the pressure cook button. Now, all you have to really do is get it warm. So we're gonna go all the way down to four minutes. You heard that right, just, just four minutes is how long you cook your ham. The good thing is you can cook it and then you can just leave it in your Instant Pot until you're all done. All right, so we are good. This is a little bit of a different pot, so I need to push start, but most of the time you can just set the timer and walk away. Okay, so we are all done here. We're just going to wait for it to cook and then, yep, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so once the timer is done, you had your four minutes of cooking, you can go ahead and release the pressure. Once all the pressure's out, carefully open your lid. There we go. And you guys, your ham is done. It is all done and it smells so good. Now I love this because you can make a delicious gravy with the drippings that are in there and you also get just really good ham. So instead of pulling it all out because it's still burning hot, I'm just gonna cut you a few pieces just so you can see how good it is. Ooh, there we go. Oh my gosh. Okay, we colored up the edges too with the sauce that we put on. It's, it is delicious, absolutely delicious. Number eight is my Instant Pot mac and cheese. Super simple, and I swear you'll never make mac and cheese a different way. So you wanna make sure your lid is off your Instant Pot, because obviously you need to use the pot. And with we're making macaroni and cheese, a creamy macaroni and cheese. So we're gonna start with one pound of elbow macaroni. Then we're gonna do four cups of chicken broth. Now I love to get these containers because I know that there are four cups in here and I don't have to measure anything. So we're gonna pour it all in. Okay. 
Okay, now the secret when making pasta is that you wanna make sure, yes, I am using my finger, you wanna make sure that all the noodles are covered in liquid. If you don't have enough liquid, then you need to add more liquid to it. You just wanna make sure all the noodles are covered or you're gonna have some hard noodles with your pasta. All right, this is all that we have to do. We're gonna put the lid on now. Okay, we're putting the lid on. Can you hear that? That means you're doing it right. Then you're gonna turn this little knob to ceiling. Now, the other Instant Pots have a different looking knob. They both have ceiling and venting, so make sure that it's on ceiling. Okay, once it's on ceiling, then we're gonna come over here and we're gonna push the manual button or the pressure cook button and we're gonna go down to just four minutes. Pasta only takes four minutes to cook. So once you push the buttons, then you're gonna wait for it to say on. Once it says on, you're good to go. Now, the difference between making, like let's say macaroni and cheese in the Instant Pot compared to on your stove top is that you literally can set your timer to four minutes and walk away. Now you think of all the steps you have to do when you do it on the stove top. You have to heat your water, you have to make sure it doesn't boil over, then you have to put your noodles in. You have to wait about seven minutes for your noodles to cook and you are just at the stove top the whole entire time. With the Instant Pot, I can go clean up the kitchen, I can go put away the laundry, I can do a lot of other things while it's cooking. So this is why I love the Instant Pot so much. All right, we're gonna let this cook and then I'll come back and I'll finish making the rest of macaroni and cheese. So once it's all done cooking, you're gonna have it say L. L means that it is done. You'll usually hear a little sound that it is done, it beeps at you, and then it's gonna start counting up. So you'll know how many minutes it's been done. So usually with pasta and other things, I like to do something called a quick release. A quick release is when you turn it to venting right when it's done cooking. Now, if you see some instructions that say natural release, that means you're just gonna leave it just as it is and let it release the pressure on its own, natural release. But with pasta, and because I wanna make this really quick, we're gonna turn it to quick release, which is turning it to venting so all the steam will come out. Okay, so once that's all done, there's a little pin that will drop. That means that you can open your lid safely. Oh, and if you can see, the pasta is cooked perfectly. Now there is a little bit liquid at the bottom and that is just fine because we're gonna use that liquid for the macaroni and cheese. So just kind of mix your noodles around a little bit. They might be a little bit stuck together, but that's not hard. Once you start mixing, they'll come apart. Okay. So now we're gonna push the saute button. The saute button is the other button that I use all the time. So you can brown your onions or you can brown your meat, stuff like that. But we're gonna use the saute button today to make everything warm. So first we're gonna push the cancel and then we're gonna push the saute button. There you go. Okay, now it's time to add the good stuff with the mac and cheese. So we're first gonna add a half a cup of milk. And I'm just gonna eyeball this a little bit. And then about a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. You don't have to add the Dijon, I just like, it just gives it a little bit of a kick. And then just a dash of hot sauce. You can use your favorite hot sauce, whatever hot sauce you like. Or if you don't like hot sauce, you don't even have to add the hot sauce. I just like the extra flavor that it gives it. And then last we're gonna add just two tablespoons of butter. So I'm just gonna mix these things in there right now. So we're gonna let the butter melt and mix in the mustard and everything else. It's starting to smell good. All right, so once the butter is all melted, now we're just gonna add two cups of cheddar cheese. I like to use sharp cheddar cheese, but you can use any kind of cheddar cheese that you want. Now if you shred your own cheddar cheese, that will make it mix a little bit easier, but I'm kind of lazy and I like to buy pre-shredded so I don't even have to worry about that stuff. I'm a more of dump everything in and go kind of person. All right, once your cheese is melted and everything is melted and mixed together, go ahead and push the cancel button. You don't wanna keep sauteing or it will burn the bottom of your pan, it will burn the noodles. So we're turning it off and so you'll just have nice hot mac and cheese ready to serve. Now, if you wanna make this a little bit earlier in the day, you can always push 
um, the cancel button again. It is also the keep warm button and you can just let it sit here for an hour or two. I would put the lid back on and let it sit until you're ready to eat. All right. Oh man, these noodles smell so good. I can smell just the little bit of Dijon mustard in there. It's my favorite. Now, I was thinking that you could easily do, if you have the other box mac and cheese, you could easily make just the Kraft macaroni and cheese too because it's literally the same thing. You're just cooking your noodles and adding everything else when you're done. Number nine is one of the most popular recipes on our website. It's Instant Pot Creamy Enchilada Soup. You're gonna start by putting two or three chicken breasts in the bottom of your Instant Pot. Now these are chicken tenders. You can use tenders or you can use chicken breasts. Now, if you are making this in the slow cooker, you're gonna do the same exact thing that I do in my Instant Pot, except when it's cooking, you're gonna cook for six to eight hours on low. Next, you're gonna add two cloves of garlic. I also like to use the minced garlic, so it's about one teaspoon. Next, you're gonna add one teaspoon of chili powder. Oop, got a little too much there. Next, you're gonna add one teaspoon of Worcestershire, one teaspoon of that sauce. <laughs> Then add one teaspoon of Tabasco sauce in it. Now that seems like a lot, but it actually isn't too spicy. If your kids are funny about spice, maybe do a half teaspoon. Then on top of that, I'm gonna add one small chopped onion. Next, add one chopped red pepper. Now they didn't have red peppers at my store, so I used an orange one. Then one can of drained black beans. Then you're gonna add one can of corn. You're not gonna drain the corn, dump everything in. Next, add two cups of your favorite enchilada sauce. Then you're gonna add four cups of chicken broth. Now, I love to get these big containers because I know it's already four cups and I can just dump the whole thing in without measuring. Next, you're gonna add a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper, and then you're ready to cook. If you're doing the Instant Pot, make sure you turn the handle and make sure that the little thing is on sealing, not venting. If you're cooking with a slow cooker, put the lid on and set it for six to eight hours. With the Instant Pot, you're gonna go manual for 20 minutes. Now when it's done cooking, I did a quick release, so that means I pushed it over to venting and let all the steam out. And I'm gonna take the lid off. Oh, it smells so good. Now I'm just gonna find my chicken and shred it. Now with the Instant Pot, it is going to be really hard to hold on to and it will shred very, very easily. Now when you're done shredding your chicken, you're gonna add one half cup of cream and then about a half a cup of sour cream. I might add a little more because I love when it's nice and creamy. Then when you're done with that, stir it in a little bit so the sour cream can melt and the cream will mix in pretty good. Next, you're gonna add two cups of cheddar cheese. Mix it really well until everything is melted and well combined. Now, if you're doing this in the slow cooker, you're gonna do the same exact thing. You're just gonna make sure it's still on low while your sour cream and cheese are melting. When it's all done, I like to serve it with cheese so the cheese is melting, some little tortilla strips, and cilantro on top. Number 10 is our Instant Pot Beef Stroganoff. I love beef stroganoff. So I put a little olive oil in the bottom of my Instant Pot, pushed saute, and then I have stew meat that I threw in. Now I'm putting garlic salt, salt, and pepper in there. And now I'm just gonna mix it around so it will sear the meat just a little bit. So I'm gonna let it sear for just about two to three minutes and then I'll add some other things. So on top of the meat, you're just gonna add some onions, I did half of an onion, but you can do a whole onion. Then add half a teaspoon of garlic or one garlic clove, and then I added a whole container of mushrooms. If you don't like mushrooms, you don't have to add them in, but I love them, so I added a lot. Then you're just gonna mix it all up for a little while while your Instant Pot is still on saute. You'll notice that the Instant Pot recipe is a little bit different than the slow cooker recipe, and we're gonna add two tablespoons of flour right now and then mix it all together. All right, then we're gonna add one tablespoon of Worcestershire, Worcestershire, however you call it, it's that sauce. One tablespoon of it right on top. And then you're gonna pour three cups of beef broth right on top. And you'll have one cup left if you have a container like that. Keep that because we're gonna put that in later on. All right, our food is ready to cook. We're gonna go ahead and put the lid on now. Make sure that it seals tightly and that it's on sealing, not venting. Now, mine is on saute right now, so I'm gonna turn it off. 
then I'm gonna push the manual button and go up to 12 minutes. Now, if you're curious about cooking times, I have a little cheat sheet right here, or in the description, I'll send a link so you can go find it there also. Now, usually with me, I like to let it release on its own, but right now we're doing a quick release because I wanna get the noodles in and cooked. Now, as soon as all the pressure is released, go ahead and take off the lid. Oh my goodness, it smells so good. So now I'm gonna add about 16 ounces of egg noodles. Now, when I'm done dumping it in, I'm gonna stir it around a little bit. If there is lots of moisture in there, go ahead and don't add any beef broth, but I felt like I needed just a little bit more, and so I added about a half a cup more of beef broth. So now you're gonna close the lid again, make sure that it's on sealing again, and then we're gonna cook it. So you're gonna have to turn your Instant Pot off again. Then push manual and go down to four minutes. That's how long noodles take to cook. Now when it's all done, I did a quick release because my kids were ready to eat and I was starving too. So go ahead and take the lid off. Then you're gonna take one cup of sour cream and just pour it right in. You wanna do this right after the lid is off because it was still gonna be really hot. Now go ahead and mix in your sour cream. Now if you noticed, mine has a little bit more liquid than I would like. You can go ahead and keep the saute button on and it will thicken up because of the flour that you put in there. Number 11 is Dr. Pepper pulled pork. Now you can have a one to three pound pork here. I'm gonna add, of course, my garlic salt and then one can of diet Dr. Pepper. Now I know this isn't the most healthy, but it's a little healthier than just plain Dr. Pepper. Okay, then we're gonna add Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce, about one cup right on top of your pork. Now you are welcome to add other seasonings too, but I love this recipe because it really, you can make it with three ingredients and it's so easy to throw together. All right, putting the lid on, we're going to sealing again because we want it to pressurize. Now we're gonna push manual and go up because three pounds, I usually go 50 to 60 minutes. This is a two pound pork, so we're going to 50 minutes. Now I let it release on its own for about eight to 10 minutes. Then I just switch it over so I can get rid of all the rest of the pressure so I can open the lid. Now if you open the lid and your pork isn't cooked all the way, the good thing about the Instant Pot is you can put the lid on and cook it some more. Now I want my pork to shred easily for this shredded pork recipe. Now once it's done shredding, I'm gonna stick it back into my sauce and let it sit there for about 20 to 30 minutes. I mean, if you need it sooner, that's fine, but I like to have it soak up the flavor. Now you can serve this on buns. I put a little extra barbecue sauce on top or you can serve it over your favorite salad. Number 12 is actually my most favorite recipe, spicy chicken and rice bowls. Then if you have leftovers, you can make them into enchiladas, which I love enchiladas. You're gonna first start with two cups of rice that you have rinsed and drained so the water runs clear and you'll dump it right into the bottom of your Instant Pot. Add two and a half cups of water right on top of the rice. Now it's time for the seasoning. Now I just added pepper to taste because I love pepper. Then you're gonna add one teaspoon of salt. Next add one teaspoon of garlic powder. And then that should be it for the seasoning. So I have one can of black beans that I've rinsed and drained and then add one can of red enchilada sauce. I used a 10 ounce can there. Okay, so now I have two cups of shredded chicken. I like to have mine already cooked and chopped up, so we'll make this recipe cook even faster. I just got a rotisserie chicken and chopped it all up. Now you're just gonna put the lid on, make sure that it's on sealing, not venting, sealing, and you are ready to cook it. So I like to use my manual button. That's about the only button I use. So I'm pushing manual, and because we just have to cook the rice, we're gonna go down to 10 minutes. All right, when it's all done, I flipped the knob over and did a quick release and then just carefully pull the lid off where it's still gonna be hot and steamy. But everything should be cooked all the way through. 
Now, like I said before, I love this recipe because it will work with enchiladas, with tacos, on top of your salad. You can do all kinds of things with this recipe. But I have to say my favorite is the rice bowl. So I like to add cheese on while it's still hot so it can melt. Then add a little bit of sour cream, a little bit of guacamole. And then if you love cilantro, I love to add cilantro to the top. Number 13 is instant pot lasagna. It's a pot in pot recipe. All right, we're just gonna start with our spring form pan. Like I said before, this is the three inch by the six inch. So you can get it a little bit bigger, the seven inch, but I'm using the six inch today. All right, we're gonna start with one egg. Then I'm gonna add one cup of ricotta cheese. Then when you're done adding the ricotta, you're gonna add your spices. So I have a half teaspoon of each one of these. We have salt, pepper, oregano, garlic powder, and Italian seasoning. Then you're just gonna dump those all in. Next, we're gonna add one cup of mozzarella cheese. Then you're gonna mix everything until it's well combined. All right, when it's all mixed together, you're gonna set that aside and pull out your spring form pan. Now I am using oven ready lasagna noodles, so I don't have to boil them, it makes it a lot easier. So I'm gonna kinda measure and then break them so they'll fit right into my pan. Now the noodles do not have to be pretty, what you're trying to do is just cover up the bottom of the springform pan the best you can. So if you notice, I am using little pieces and it's okay because it will cook together. All right, so I'm just adding a few more noodles on and now I am ready to put half of my cheesy ricotta mixture in there. Then you're just gonna spread it around the best you can. Now I'm just gonna take a handful of spinach leaves and just kinda tear them up and put them right on top of the cheese. Again, it's lasagna, so it doesn't have to be pretty. Next I have a 24 ounce jar of just traditional spaghetti sauce. You can use whatever sauce you like in your lasagna. Then just spread the sauce around right over the spinach. Now you're just gonna repeat your layers. So you're gonna add your noodles again. And like I said before, they don't have to be perfect because they will all cook together. Next, you're gonna add the rest of the cheese mixture right on top of the noodles. Then just spread it all around. Now we're ready for the spinach again. So I just grabbed another little handful and I'm just ripping it up into pieces so it will lay as flat as I can get it. And again, you're gonna add a half of a cup of your spaghetti sauce or whatever sauce you love on top of your spinach leaves. And just spread it around again. <laughs> now this is the last layer of noodles. So again, I'm gonna try and measure them so they'll fit perfectly into my little pan. Again, you're gonna add another half cup or so of your sauce, spread it around. And now for my most favorite part, the cheese. So I added about a half a cup to a cup. I like a lot of cheese, so I added about a cup. Now once you're done with that, you're gonna take a piece of foil and put it right on top of your spring form pan. Now my Instant Pot came with a steam rack, and so that's what I'm gonna use today to cook my lasagna. I know there are a lot of other things you can use for your Instant Pot, but this came with mine, so we're just gonna make it easy. All right, so now I'm just adding one cup of water because you need water for it to pressurize. Then I'm gonna put my pan right on top. Then you're gonna put your lid on, close it, and make sure that your thing is turned to sealing, not venting, you want it on sealing. Then on your Instant Pot, you're gonna push manual and go up to 24 minutes. Then when it's done, you're gonna let it release on its own, so you're not gonna put it on venting for 15 minutes. So now I'm preheating my oven to 450 degrees. Take the foil off of your lasagna, put it in, and watch it for about two to three minutes until it's nice and golden brown on top. Number 14 is chicken Alfredo. All right, so to get started, you're gonna push the saute button and we're gonna let that heat up to hot. Yes, okay, so you'll just wanna add about two tablespoons of olive oil to the bottom of your Instant Pot. Now, can I show you my trick? Yes. I like to pick it up and kind of just like 
Mix Ooh, it, yeah, make sure good. it covers. We'll cover it. Exactly. No sticking, no Perfect. burning here today. No, not today. <laughs> All right, then we're gonna add, this is about three pounds of chicken. Now you can see that we've kind of cut it into strips. Um, just, it will make it cook so much faster if it's cut smaller. Mm -hmm. And I like the, I like the strips with Alfredo, right? That's mm -hmm. what you think of when you think of Alfredo, so. And I like doing it beforehand, because then after it's like, you're trying to shred hot chicken and it's like. Right. Once this is just cooked, it's just it's nice. It's just nice and easy. And done. Exactly. You can hear sizzle. Sizzle, sizzle. So how long do you saute the chicken for? So you're gonna do like three minutes okay. on each side. Okay. I'm trying to spread them out <laughs> as best I can. You're doing great. Thanks, thanks. Almost done here. Here we go. Oop. Last, oop, last two. Here we go. Okay, so we'll give them just a second, let them sit there, okay. and then we'll just flip them over in about two to three minutes. So then just to season them up a little, we're just gonna do a little salt and pepper, just for taste, no direct measurement. Nah. And you know us, we usually just yeah. kinda eyeball things. We just wing it. That's how it works here. <laughs> okay, they've been browned on both sides for about three minutes. We're just gonna kinda stir them, stir them up a little bit. There we go, okay. Now we're gonna cook the pasta. So yes. let's add some of our stuff here. Okay. So we're gonna add one teaspoon of minced garlic. Nice. Okay, then we'll add one teaspoon of parsley into this. Nice, mix that around. Now I'm gonna hurry and turn off the saute button okay. if that's okay. Cancel. <laughs> oh, it smells good just it with the garlic smell really in there. Okay, mm. then Let's add our pasta on top okay. and then we'll add on the broth. So we're gonna add just like one pound of the pasta. Yeah. And then the secret with the pasta is we're just going to make sure that all the pasta is covered with liquid. So yes. right now, this is four cups of chicken broth that we're gonna put in here. Mm -hmm. It's like we just need to add, yeah, you wanna yeah. measure that a little bit. We might need to add just a little bit more. Just we. When your pasta's not touching the liquid, it's gonna get hard and crispy. Uh -huh, yeah. We don't want that. We want, we we want, want soft pasta. We want crunchy noodles in no. our pasta. Okay, how's that looking? Can Good. we pat the rest yeah. down? Perfect. I think we're ready now. Okay. Ready? Ready. Let's do it. You're gonna put on your lid. Now, if you have a little knob, make sure that it's turned to sealing, not, not venting. venting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This one doesn't have a knob, so it automatically just sets onto ceiling, so you're good. So you're gonna push the pressure cook button or the manual button, and then we're gonna go down to four minutes, because our chicken's pretty much cooked. We just gotta cook the noodles, and we're ready to go. So once it's set, you can go ahead and walk away. All right, so once the timer is all done, you can go ahead and either turn your little knob to venting, or with this Instant Pot, all you have to do is press the button now, so. Ready? Here we go. <laughs> okay, once the pressure is out, you can go ahead and safely take off the lid. Mm, smells good. It does smell good. Just so gonna mix it around. It looks like there's like a little bit excess water, yeah. but not too much. I feel like we're okay to just leave it as it is. Yeah. So, okay. Now okay. we're gonna add the good stuff. We're gonna make the sauce. Yes, to this we're going to add cream cheese. And it's okay if it's still a little cold because it will all melt together with the hot pasta and the chicken. Right, so we'll and so that's like, the that's the eight ounce block yes. of cream cheese. Okay, while you're gonna do that, I'm gonna okay. put in like a fourth cup of Parmesan. Mm. Nice. Do you want to mix it around and you put in the sure. next? Awesome. And then this is just one cup of mozzarella. Nice, love all this cheese. Yeah. I mean, Alfredo, I guess it does all cheese, <laughs> all good stuff. Now, if you want it to cook a little bit faster, you can push the saute button yes. and we'll heat things up a little bit more. Okay, this will take just a few minutes to melt all yes. our cheeses and cream cheese and everything. So you just keep at it, keep yes. at it. So while we're waiting for it to, you know, melt, melt thicken up all a little there. bit, to help thicken it up, we're gonna take two tablespoons of water and then just one tablespoon, it's a half, so we need two of them. So one tablespoon of 
our cornstarch. And we're just going to mix it up a little bit and then put it in there with, while it's on saute to hopefully yes. it, will, it will thicken it right up yes. for us. Because we don't want liquidy no. chicken alfredo. No. We want thick, creamy chicken alfredo. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're just gonna stir this for a little bit until it's nice and thick. Okay, so everything is stirred together. It's creamy, it's thickening up. So I'm just we'll gonna, just yeah, turn this off. Turn, turn off our saute off. off. There we go. And then we're just gonna serve this up. Mm. And we like to serve this with just a little bit of basil on top. It just adds a really nice, fresh flavor to it all. You could also put a little bit more Parmesan on top yes. too. That's mm. one of my favorites. Never opposed to more cheese. <laughs> Never opposed to that. Especially with dealing with Alfredo. <laughs> yeah. And there it is, your finished product. Number 15 is another one of our most popular recipes. It's Instant Pot Fall Off the Bone Ribs. Now don't be intimidated by these, they really are so easy. So first I'm gonna add a lot of salt on top of my ribs and then a little bit of pepper. Next you're gonna grab some apple juice and pour about a cup to a cup and a half into your pot. Now this is your liquid so you'll be able to get the pressure. Now my Instant Pot is a six quart and the ribs I'm using are beef ribs so they're actually a lot bigger. But if you're using pork ribs, you can put them in your Instant Pot just like this in any size of Instant Pot. But because my ribs are so big, they don't fit that way. So I'm gonna show you how I put them in. So first you're just gonna cut them right down the middle. Try not to cut the bone and try and make the meat as even on both sides if you can. As soon as you're done cutting them, you're gonna put them inside the Instant Pot, one on top of the other. Then put on your lid, make sure you seal it tight, and always, always make sure it's on sealing, so it'll work. Then you're gonna press your meat stew button and go all the way down to 25. Now I let this recipe do a slow release, meaning I let it release on its own. So now I'm just gonna check, yep, there's no pressure, so I'm gonna open it up. And the smell of these things are amazing. So I'm gonna take some tongs, pull them out, and put them on a lined cookie sheet. I lined it with foil, so my cleanup is going to be a breeze. Before your Instant Pot is done cooking, go ahead and preheat your oven to broil, so it'll be about 550 degrees or broil. Now before we broil these, we're gonna spread some barbecue sauce on them so they'll be caramelized, I guess, in barbecue sauce. <laughs> so I just did a few squirts of barbecue sauce. You can use any kind of barbecue sauce you like and then I just spread it around so it will be pretty even on each rib. Then when you're done, stick them in the broiler for about ooh, two to four minutes. You need to watch it so it doesn't burn your ribs. Now instead of just dumping this applesauce, I'm gonna put some potatoes in it because I'm gonna have mashed potatoes with my ribs. This is totally optional, but I'm all about easy side dishes. When you have your potatoes in, you're just gonna turn it, make sure it's sealed, then you'll push manual. You're gonna go up to 15 minutes. While those are cooking, my ribs are done and they look amazing. Now because I only put a few potatoes on, you can do a quick release and it won't splatter everywhere. So there you go. So I just took them out, I mashed them up with my potato masher, and there you go. You have ribs and a perfect side of mashed potatoes. Number 16 was actually a meal someone brought to me and they were so kind to let me share that with you and that is our Instant Pot Tuscan Chicken. All right, so we're gonna start out with two cups of pasta. So the one that we are using, and I don't know if I'm gonna say it right, Ditalini, Ditalini. The little ones. Anyways, they're the cutest <laughs> little tubular pastas. My kids love them because they're a fun shape. Right. So you need two cups, which is about half of a 16 ounce container. You just go ahead, pour that into the bottom. Nice. Okay, then we're gonna do also two cups of chicken broth. And again, this is four cups, so we're gonna just kind of eyeball it and yeah. put in our two cups of chicken broth. Or at least until the noodles are all covered. Yep, there we go. Okay, then we're gonna add in two tablespoons of butter. And you can just like, <laughs> if it to wants the to come. There we go. There we go. You can literally just plop it in, because guess what? It's gonna pressurize and melt, and it's gonna be perfect. Perfect. Um, just two cups of chicken. Yep. Cooked chicken. Cooked chicken. Cooked and diced. Okay. 
Okay, then it's time to cook it. All right. You're gonna put your lid on. You hear the little jingle? That means it's on correctly. Then this is called the Nova, so you don't have to turn any knobs to sealing or venting because, yeah, it doesn't have that. But if you do have a different one, like a Duo or a Lux, make sure that your little knob is turned to sealing. All right, so we're gonna push the pressure cook button and we're gonna go all the way down to about four minutes. Then once you set the timer, you can literally just walk away. All right, it is finished cooking. We are going to do a quick release because our pasta doesn't need to stay cooking continually. So I'm gonna either push this or if you have the knob, move it to venting. <laughs> Woo! We're gonna see how this works. All right, once all the pressure's out, you can safely open it. Nice. I love how big these noodles get, right? Yes. So right now you're just gonna mix in your chicken and your pasta and just kind of mix everything make together. Sure it's all done. Now the nice thing about this, if you fill up the liquid to where the pasta hits, you don't have to drain anything. You can actually just kind of mix and then we're ready to add the rest of the stuff. That's awesome. You're ready? Yep. Okay, what you got? Okay, so I'm gonna start with the tomatoes. These are sun-dried tomatoes. Sun-dried, yes. They have been drained. They come in a little jar. So you drain them, chop them up, kind of into as big a pieces as you want. So we did like four ounces of those. You yeah. can do up to eight ounces yeah. if you If want. your family loves them. Yes, yes. Okay, next time we're just gonna add an eight ounce block of cream cheese. Um, we'll get that starting to melt in yes. there. Let it sit in the heat. Yes. You can even, if you want to, cut it up. Break it up. Yeah, it's a it good idea. Melt even faster. Okay. Okay, then we're gonna add about a half cup of grated Parmesan cheese. Just Dump that Put in. That right in. Mm -hmm. And we've got how much uh, parsley? One tablespoon. Cool. <laughs> okay, so we have half a teaspoon of pepper and what, half a teaspoon of garlic salt. Yep. Awesome. All right. And you just dump that in. There you go. Nice. All right, I'll mix this a little bit. Okay, and then we've got how much milk? About half a cup. Okay. Melt. Put that right on top. All right, so this is gonna take a little while for the cream cheese to like melt and mix in. Yeah. So we're actually gonna help it along a little bit. So you can push cancel and then you're gonna push the saute button. So we'll just help it. Yeah, cook it. Heats it up really yeah. fast. And any extra liquid like that milk in there, we'll, we'll make sure that it's all nice and, yeah. and thickened up a little bit. It there we go. so good. It does. The other thing I'm gonna throw in while you're mixing that up and okay. it's heating up is just two cups of baby spinach. And I actually kind of just rip it with my hands so it's even smaller. Good idea. It's going to shrink a ton. Yeah, you and probably won't, your kids probably won't even be able to see it. Yep, but because I do have picky kids, I <laughs> am going to rip it up even smaller. Nice. And a picky husband. <laughs> oh, this, is, this is my life. Hide the vegetables in there. Seriously, <laughs> seriously. Okay, so you want about two cups or two big handfuls of that. Nice. And it will shrink down as the, the cream cheese melts and everything heats up. Yeah. All right, so it's all mixed together. It smells amazing. We're gonna push cancel here so it will stop cooking because we don't want it to burn onto the bottom. Yes. But here is when you can either like serve it right now or yep. you can let it cool down a little bit and then put it in a freezer meal bag <laughs> or whatever you want. That was a huge mess. mess. <laughs> yes, not the best serving spoon, but you get the gist. You get the gist. It's amazing. And it tastes so good. Nice and creamy. Totally cheesy. Your kids and the even spinach. Are gonna love yep, it. everybody loves this one. <laughs> Number 17 brings back lots of memories growing up. It's my mom's chili. Now, if you want to cook your hamburger in your Instant Pot, you can. All you have to do is push the saute button, put your meat in there. I would also put your onions in there and you'll cook them together. But it's Halloween, things are crazy, so I cooked my meat in advance. I'll put a link in the description for you on how to cook it inside your Instant Pot. Now onto the chili, I have one pound of cooked ground beef. I have three stalks of celery that I chopped up and then one whole onion. You don't have to use a whole onion, I just like onions, so I like to do the whole thing. On top of that, you're gonna add one can of kidney beans. I use dark kidney beans and I drained them, rinsed them and drained them. Then you have eight ounces of tomato sauce and two cans of diced tomatoes just thrown right on top. Now with one of those cans of diced tomatoes, I just filled up about half a cup of water and dumped it in the pot. 
Now the next thing is one fourth cup of ketchup. You can measure if you want. I just always eyeball my ketchup. This next step is optional, but my mom always does it. So you add one tablespoon of sugar. Then two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire, Worcestershire, lots of comments about that one. You can say it how you want. I call it Worcestershire sauce. So you can mix it around a little bit if you want to, but it's all pressurizing together, so I just put the lid on. Make sure your little knob is on sealing, not venting. Then I'm using, of course, the manual button. So if you have a different Instant Pot, you use pressure cook, just anything to make it pressurized, just normal and you're gonna cook it for 10 minutes. Now you can turn the knob and let the pressure release or you can let it release on its own. Now the chili is all the way done. You're gonna just mix it up a little bit. Now I'm curious what you guys like to serve on your chili. We always serve ours with Frito chips, with cheese. Number 18 is, this is my sister Camille, her favorite recipe. It's cheesy chicken and rice bowls. Mm, it's so good. Should we jump into this one? Let's do this. This is one of our favorites on oh our website. And we put it on the website not long ago and it exploded. Everyone so loved it. We're showing you just some simple ways to even make it easier than the recipe that's on the website. Exactly. So here's our shortcuts. Let's do it. What are we starting with? All right, let's, I'm gonna have you cut up the chicken. Okay. So we're gonna have like one and a half pounds to two pounds yep. of chicken. Chicken. And I like to use the tenderloins cause it just makes them cook a little bit faster. And, and they're nice because they're small, so they're easy to cut up. And lots of times they've already been, um, the, like the fat's been, they're trimmed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so a lot of times they're already trimmed, makes it really easy to cut it up. Awesome. I'm just cutting it into some kind of bite-sized pieces. Oh, that's perfect, especially for kids. All right, so yep. she's cutting that, I'm gonna push the saute button right here. So when you push the saute button, right now it says, there's a little button that says less, normal, or more. We're just gonna keep it at normal because it's fine. All right, so saute, then it's going to beep for you. After you push the saute button, it's gonna start heating up. Once it gets hot, I kind of just test it a little bit. Once it's hot, then I add my oil and other things. How long so. does it take to get hot? Sometimes like two minutes, sometimes like okay. five. Lots just of times, depends. even before it's hot, I'll just start cooking. Yeah. I'm in a hurry, okay. it is what it is. Right, this is real life. Exactly. All right, so once it's heated up, we're just gonna add, what, about a tablespoon, two tablespoons yep. of olive oil. So yep. we're just gonna drizzle that into the top of the pot. Now I like when my oil gets hot, and then I do a trick and I lift my pot up, and just kind of wiggle my oil around so it covers all the bottom of my Instant Pot. Well, there you go. There you go. Kristen's fun. Fancy. Instant pot tricks. <laughs> That's why we call her the Instant Pot Master. There we go. Once the oil is heated up, ready to go, Camille is gonna add our chicken. Yep. You ready? Kristen gets scared to touch raw chicken, so that's why I'm doing it. <laughs> I appreciate that. If your oil's hot, it should sizzle at this point. Yes. Ours is still warming up, but that's okay. You can hear it a little bit. Now, this makes a lot of rice <laughs> and other things, so this is a lot of chicken. If you have yeah. a smaller family, you could even cut this recipe in half or even in fourths. Totally. I mean, you just make sure you cut all the ingredients down, but the timing will be the same. You cook it for the same amount. All right, so once the chicken starts to cook on the bottom, you kind of just flip it around a little bit. I kind of stir mm. as I go. Is that horrible? No. I, that's what I do too, just to make sure that it all gets evenly cooked. I'm gonna throw the onion in there too. Please do. Just to add some more flavor. Let that cook in the oil. Nice. I think that's one of my favorite smells is cooking chicken and onions together. Well, let's make it even better and add some garlic. All right, how much garlic are we gonna add? I think just a teaspoon, or what, two cloves? Sorry, I'm just grabbing a spoon. No, it's fine. Yeah, two cloves, that sounds good. So we're just using jarred garlic. Um, a half teaspoon of this equals a clove. This is one of my favorite shortcuts, oh. so you don't have to chop fresh garlic. I think all six of us I know. use that shortcut. We love it. I don't like pressing my garlic. Yep. Okay, so the seasonings we're gonna add, I'm just doing like a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of pepper. You can totally eyeball this. Don't feel like you need to measure it out. I think a Rachel Ray style, pour it in your hand and then dump it in. <laughs> we're not fancy like that. Yep. If you wanna add other seasonings that you like, you could. You could do some Italian seasoning. You yeah. could do a little bit more like garlic powder if you love the taste of garlic. I mean, however you like to season it, you can add a little more. Totally works. We love like a little bit more salt, so mm -hmm. I usually add about a tablespoon of salt into this recipe. You do? I do, I love salty things. 
Mm. I didn't know that about you. Yep. Learn something new every day. Yep. All right, so once the chicken kind of has some browning around the edges, I right. mean, you can cook this as much or as little as you want. It just really is to seal in the flavor, kind of make the chicken have some added moisture, I yeah, would say. Yeah, and I think a little bit of flavor too, it gives yep. it some saute. 100%. It. So now, from this point, it's just kind of a dump and go. Right, so yes, we're adding in fun. two cups of rice. Now in the recipe, it says it a little bit differently, but yeah, we're yeah. showing you this is the simple way to make a dump and go. It's like the dump and go yep. version. Totally. Yep. All right. So I'm doing two cups of white rice. If you want to, you can rinse the rice before you dump it in. Totally up to you. Yeah, but I'm just going to go ahead. We throw don't judge that in. you either way if you yep. rinse your rice or not. Do your There's own no thing. judging. Okay, and then I'm going to do about two cups of chicken broth. Nice. Just kind of pour that right in. There we go. All right, so the secret when you're cooking you rice in the Instant Pot is you wanna make sure that the rice, every single kernel of rice touches the liquid, because if it doesn't, you're gonna have some hard pieces of rice there. So hmm. that's what we're gonna do. Didn't know that. Now you know. Okay, I've got half a cup of water going in too. Okay. Just some added moisture for that rice. Now I've got a can of cream of chicken soup. If you want to, if you're feeling super domestic, you can make your own, but for simplicity, I just use a can of this. You can get, um, they make a healthier option. Reduced fat Yeah, kind. reduced fat, which works great. It's not coming out. There we go. Okay, so add that in there. And then the last thing we are gonna throw in is a bag of frozen vegetables. And they are still frozen. They are. So. Which I think, works better because you're gonna cook all the vegetables, rice and chicken all at the same time. Yep. So I think frozen vegetables works better because then they'll cook. Yeah, they won't be super they mushy. They won't be soggy. Yep. So all right, dump just dump in. it in. Yep. Give it a good mix. I'm just gonna mix it around, make sure all the rice is covered by the liquid. And I think we're good to go. Good to go. So we have our lid now, we're all ready to go. Now remember, while we were putting this together, it's still on saute, which is okay. I guess I should put the lid on correctly, huh? Okay, so we're putting the lid on. We're gonna turn this little knob to sealing, not venting. Make sure I can see this here. Now, because it is on saute, first you have to push cancel. So you're gonna push the keep warm cancel button just to turn it all the way off. Then you're gonna push the manual button. Now, if you don't have a manual button, you'll have a pressure cook button. It's the same thing, manual pressure cook, you're good. All right, so then we're gonna go up to six minutes. Now we can do six minutes because our chicken is little. It's already been sauteed. The rice only takes about six to seven-ish minutes to cook, and the vegetables only take about two minutes to cook, but they still taste good together. Yeah. So it's all kind of the same amount of time. That's why you can all cook it together. Awesome. All right, so you heard it little beep. Once it says on, you can just walk, walk away. away. So it's all done cooking. We cooked it for about six minutes. You can go up to seven if you want, but because it's done, we're gonna turn it over to a quick release. Here we go. <laughs> Once all the pressure's out, then you can open the lid. Just beware of the steam, because it gets toasty. All right, so if you can see this. Now it looks like there's a lot of liquid on top, but once you mix it around, there's some rice that still needs a little bit of liquid and it will all work out together. Yep, it all evens out. Exactly. So while you're doing that, you want me to dump the cheese in? Yeah. So you're gonna add, is it one cup? Yeah, one cup of cheddar cheese. One cup cheese. of shredded cheddar cheese. You can shred your own if you want, or you can buy pre-shredded, shredded. doesn't really matter. We always tend to buy the shredded because it just makes it's life fast. Yep. easy. But I did, totally. I did notice if you buy the block cheese and shred it yourself, mm -hmm. it melts a little bit easier. So much easier, mm -hmm. especially in this recipe. But yeah. either way, you're gonna be just fine. Exactly. If you want more cheese, to make it more cheesy, feel free to add more. That's what we did too. So after we did individual servings, we put a little more cheese on. On each one? Yep. It's a great idea. Yeah, that's what we let my, the kids. Blend. This is super kid friendly. My kids loved this. Mine too. And like you said, it makes a ton. Like we ate it for lunches all week long. Right, This we're going on third meal of this. I mean, it's just the sweet. It's food. awesome. I know, it's, it's a, one of our favorites now. All right, okay. What do you think, looking good? Looks good. Okay, should we plate it up? Yep, so at this point you could feed it to your family. It is gonna be super hot for a minute, but yeah. it's delicious, it's cheesy, it's comfort food. I don't think you could ask for anything more. 
And then like you were saying, if you want to throw on a little bit of extra cheese, especially when it's hot. There we go. We'll get all melty on there. If you want to get fancy, you can throw on some fresh parsley. But there you go. Super Dinner simple. is served. There we go. Number 19 is egg roll bowls. I love this one. So you're gonna start by pushing the saute button on your Instant Pot. Now once it's hot, you're gonna dump in one pound of ground turkey or ground pork or even ground chicken, whatever you like. Now I have a little chopster thing. This is my most favorite thing to cut up my meat or mashed potatoes or any of that stuff. I'll put a link in the description for it. It's my favorite thing. Now once your meat is all cooked, it's time to add the seasonings. First you're gonna add one tablespoon of garlic powder. Then I'm gonna add one tablespoon of dried ground ginger. Now the ginger gives it that yummy taste. On top of that, go ahead and add one tablespoon of soy sauce. I like to use a lower sodium soy sauce, but it's totally up to you what you wanna use. And then you're just gonna add a half a cup of chicken broth. Now you can use water if you don't have chicken broth, but I like to use the chicken broth. Then to stir it all together. At the store, I just grabbed a bag of coleslaw mix. It's all put together, all ready to go, and I'm just dumping the whole entire bag in. Now I'm just pushing the coleslaw down a little bit. You don't wanna mix a lot because you want that liquid in the bottom of your pot. All right, once you're done, go ahead and put your lid on. Make sure the little knob is turned to ceiling. I'm gonna push the cancel button. Because it was on saute, you need to push cancel. Then push pressure cook button or manual, and you're going down to zero minutes. Now after you set the timer, it's gonna say on after a few seconds. That means you did it right, you can walk away. Now because it's only set for zero, it won't take long at all. And I hope went ahead and pushed the knob over to venting to let all of the pressure out. Once you can take the lid off, go ahead and do it and then mix it all together. Then once you're all done, it's time to go on to the egg roll wrappers. Now you have some options with the egg roll wrappers. I like to cut them up into a few different strips and kind of make them as like little dippers. It's totally up to you how you want to do this, but I just spread them on a sheet pan. Now go ahead and brush them with a little bit of olive oil and then put them in the oven at 400 degrees for about four to five minutes, but you have to watch them. Now you can also make egg rolls by putting a little bit in the center of the wrapper and then folding in both sides and rolling it up. Now you want to be sure to place it seam side down, that way it won't fall apart while it's cooking. Because these are baked egg rolls, they're not going to have the bubbly look as if they're deep fried. You can deep fry if you want, but baked is a whole lot better for you. Alright, I'm going to brush them a little bit with olive oil, stick them in the oven at 350 degrees, they'll cook for about 40 minutes. And there you have it. These are the egg roll bowls or just egg rolls. And number 20, last but not least, everyone needs to know how to cook a roast in the Instant Pot. We're making roast. So I'm starting with a two pound pot roast. The good thing about the Instant Pot is that you can use a cheaper cut of meat and it will still taste delicious. I always like to cook the meat on the very bottom of my Instant Pot because that's where it's hottest and that's where it will cook the fastest. Next you're gonna add just a half of a packet of the Lipton onion soup mix and just pour that right on top of your meat. Now I've pre-sliced some onions. I like them so they're a little bit bigger chunks. You can chop them up too if you want to, but adding the onion to the pot roast is one of my favorites. Next, I'm going to add my carrots. Now I have gotten bigger carrots here. I peeled them and then I chopped them into bigger chunks. Just because it will be cooking for a long time, you kind of want big chunks of carrots. Next, I'm just gonna throw in some potatoes. I had some leftover red ones. And then I also am gonna fill it with just some small ones. Now you can use whatever kind of potatoes you like. Just know they will be cooked all the way through. Then you're gonna add the other half of your Lipton onion soup mix on top of your potatoes. Then lastly, you're gonna add two cups of beef broth right on top of everything. Then go ahead and put your lid on, make sure that it's sealed all the way, and you're gonna turn that little knob to sealing, not venting, because sealing means you wanna cook it. Now we are gonna push the meat stew button, and we're gonna go all the way up to 60 minutes. Now I let the pot roast release on its own, so I didn't push venting until I was ready to open it just to make sure. But look how good this looks. 
Then I just took my meat out and I shredded it, put my potatoes and carrots on the sides. Now, if you want more Instant Pot recipes, you can check out my best 10 recipes right up here. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.